pulse width modulation. Floating, proportional, on off. If you're an HVAC control pro, you got to start with getting the signals right. So in this video, we're going to break them down for you. Hi, I'm Eric Stromquist with Control Trends and StromquistandCompany.com, giving you control news and products you can use. So enjoy this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. This is the place where we get you updated with technical videos. Right now you're on the HVAC Tech School playlist. And if you want us to make any videos or answer any questions, please reach out in comments and we'll do the best we can to accommodate you. The following is a presentation of the Control Trends Podcasting Network. So there are basically three types of signals you're going to run into. You're going to run into on-off, floating, what some people call pulse width modulation, and modulating or proportional controls. First, we need to understand what comprises a control loop. There are three elements. There's the sensor, there's the controller, and then there's the controlled output, which is typically a valve or a damper in HVAC. The sensor is usually testing something like temperature. The controller allows us to create a set point, and then based on how close we are to set point, a signal is sent out to the actuator that controls the valve or the damper. First type of control I want to talk about is on-off control. It, uh, you could think of it as something like the key in your ignition. It turns the car on or off. In HVAC parlance, it's typically the thermostat. It sends a signal, an on-off signal, to turn the unit on or turn it off. The challenge with on-off control can be that as you reach set point, you typically overshoot it and then it turns off and then it goes under the set point, so the system tends to hunt. It's not necessarily very accurate, which typically is fine for turning your air conditioning and heating units on and off. Another type of control which is a little bit more accurate is called floating or pulse width modulation. And this typically is a certain type of controller that will do on-off control either very rapidly or very slowly. It's sort of time-based dependent, and then it's coupled with an actuator that'll take that signal, and that will smooth out uh, your control signal and bring you closer to set point. Okay, when it comes to controlling most chill water valves or dampers, we typically go to something called proportional or modulating controls. Getting back to our car analogy, that is like the accelerator. You push it up and down depending on whether you need to go faster or slower. A great example of this is a pneumatic valve actuator or an electronic valve. So we'll see that's on chill water coils and hot water coils and dampers. Okay, let's talk about the signals you're most likely to see in our industry. You're most likely to see um, pneumatic. There's still a lot of pneumatics out there, and pneumatics is definitely a form of proportional control. And it's usually an air signal in terms of uh, PSI. And the actuators are calibrated to calibrate between a certain pressure. Uh, when you get away from that, the earliest sort of proportional controls were uh, Series 90. Series 90 type controls. It was a Wheatstone bridge type uh, application, and basically the actuator and the sensor control, basically the actuator and the controller uh, sort of balanced off each other in something called a Wheatstone bridge. There's still some of this out there, although not that much. Uh, if you find something with Honeywell and it's got a 9 in it, like T991 or L91, anytime you see a 9, it lets you know that it's proportional and it's Wheatstone bridge. Once we got to the age of electronics, we began to go to uh, 2 to 10 volt or 4 to 20 milliamp. And within those 2 to 10 volt and 4 to 20 milliamp, you can sort of sequence valves. Like one actuator could open, for example, at uh, 3 volts and close at 6. The other could open at 6 and close at 9. So the really cool thing about those electronic type controllers is you can definitely sequence your valves or your dampers using that control signal. Now it all gets back to you've got the controller, you've got the sensor, and if you've got a proportional output going to a proportional type uh, element like a valve or an actuator, then you actually have to tune it, okay? And that that's where it can get a little tricky. And that's usually... You hear you, you will hear a term called you will hear a term called PID proportional proportional 
integral and derivative. Yeah, I know, man, I hated calculus too. But you sort of need to understand those terms if you're gonna be able to actually set one of these loops up. Now we're gonna do a deep dive on PID and make it easy for you. So be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And also hit that little alarm icon, that way you'll be notified uh, as soon as this video comes out. Okay, so that's it, uh, your introduction to control signals. Thanks for checking us out. Remember, subscribe to the channel.